name is Danny and this is my 1999 Porsche 911 Carrera. And we picked it up for $10,000. Yeah, show them the whole story. Of course, buying such a legendary car for $10,000 comes at a price, which is, it looks like that. Ooh. Yeah. We bought it sight on scene from a place called Cold Part. There was only two people that bid on this car, your boy and someone else. And the reason is when bidding on the car, this is the only picture of the damage you could see. That's why a lot of people didn't bid on it. And it's just way too risky. You can't see if the frame roll is bad or not. Well, we took that risk like a moron. And let me tell you, frame roll is good and the damage is too minimal. Everything looks good. <laughs> As you can see, everything could have been much, much worse. The important pieces, the frame roll is good. But since we are rebuilding this car, our goal is to turn it into the rowdy. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> Legendary. This is the GT3. On a budget, because we are on a budget. My name is Danny Z, and we're always doing things for cheap on a budget. But I can assure you one thing, once we are done, it is going to sound, drive, and look just as good, if not better, than a GT3. And for today's video, we're repairing the damage, possibly getting it back together, but most importantly, we are taking this car for a drive. Let's go. How are you gonna do that? You literally don't even have a motor. <gasps> it's in the back. So we are calculating all the costs because we have to be very efficient. This is a very pricey build, but so far we got the radiator support and everything set up, which we're going to do later in this video. We got that for $210. I just looked at how much a hood costs from Porsche. Guess how much a hood costs? I don't know. $1,000. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm going to cry or throw up. And then a Fender from Porsche, brand new Fender, costs, guess how much? I don't even know what a Fender is. You don't even know what a Fender is. That's okay, honey. That's okay because you're still beautiful and amazing. $900. And if you want to mock everything up today and fix this issue today, we at least need a Fender and a hood. But I'm not going to spend $2,000. I just can't that ebay right ebay ebay's a good idea we just went on ebay <laughs> cheapest fender and hood combined at least fifteen hundred dollars i'm selling the car i don't know if this is doable i really can't but when in doubt you go on facebook and see if there's any nearby part outs and guess what let's go two and a half hour through the everglades through gator town let's go baby The smallest hood in the world did not want to fit in the back of a Hyundai Santa Fe. Thankfully, the fender fit, but the hood? When Porsche sold car parts, the last thing they expected was a 24-year-old with a hood on top of a Hyundai. All right, let's go home. The guy was really cool, though. If you're watching this, shout out to you, bro. We got hood and fender for $300. Let's go. I feel like Rocky right now. Let's go. A five hour drive later and we saved so much money. But even though we roughly saved a thousand dollars, you'll see later in this video how we pretty much lost it all. So to pull the structural damage, hold on. We got a four ton hydraulic ram system. Now this is going to go to the cost of the car. I think, I think it was like $150. It's got a bunch of like arms and things and obviously use this hydraulic system to push out the dent. Now, thankfully the damage on this Porsche could have been so much worse and it should be a pretty easy fix, should be. And although I don't know how the car crashed, comment below your best theory. My opinion, he was making a U-turn. There was a truck in front of him. He didn't realize that the truck stopped and just pretty much went under the truck. Okay, so we do have to go ahead and take off these hinges because when we're propping up the new hood, obviously this can't be in the way and the new hood did come with hinges. Big W. Porsches uses 10 millimeters? Wow. Boom, just like that. But here we go, it's time to fix it. Okay, that looks crazy, but stop right there real quick. I know what you're probably wondering, Danny, that paint looks absolutely incredible. But you live in Florida, a lot of you be raised. How are you gonna make sure and protect this paint it doesn't just fade and get bad over time? And that is only going to be possible thanks to today's sponsor, Avalon King, and their brand new Avalon Shield Max, which is a ceramic coat, and it literally lasts up to three years of coating. That's crazy. 
Now, Avalon King doesn't just provide a very easy to use, budget friendly, very high quality, long lasting ceramic coat. They pretty much provide everything you need to ceramic coat a car at your own house. Now, the main reason you want to ceramic coat your car is because it basically creates another level of protection for your car's paint or clear coat. It is much easier to keep your car clean because it pretty much glasses everything out and no dirt sticks on it. It's actually pretty fascinating. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like when you ceramic coat. <laughs> And here we have the ceramic coat bottle. If you have a small or medium sized vehicle, this should be plenty. Love the bottle. You also have your appliance pad, gloves, and the buffy microfiber towel. This cleans it even more, really prepares the surface. Now this is literally my second time ever doing this. Get a few drops right there. You gotta make sure you shake the bottle. Just like that. You take it to someone, it is at least $1,500 to get your car professionally ceramic coated. Avalon King makes it so easy for you to do. I don't even know what I'm doing. And it was just very simple, easy to work with, at home, DIY, and very cost effective. You can use this little thing at your house. In four hours, everything will be cured. You normally have to wait 24 to 48 hours. And the new Armor Shield Max also gives you protection for three years. Paired up with a little spray that just maintains it. You're set for life. With that being said, thank you so much to Avalon King for sponsoring today's video. I will leave everything linked into the description. Let's get back to the video because we got a lot to do. And since we are going to be using the trunk area to be able to fix the issue, it's a smart idea to take out the liner so we have more space and maybe there's some more hidden damage. First, we straighten out where the weather strip goes. And after that, the idea is to pretty much mock up the hood and fender and just see how off the body panels right, are right. from where they should be. Oh, yeah. I mean, hold on. You gotta. There you go. Look at that. Although everything actually fit pretty good. Obviously, in the front side of the fender, you could absolutely tell there was a much bigger drop on the tub of the car. It's much lower than where it should be for it to meet up with the fender. This is starting to look like a car again. Yes, sir. The hood was very easy. Just two bolts on each side. And although we did have to move it back and forth a little bit to get it perfect, it lined up just fine. Okay. 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 Look at that! It's a whole car again! It's just two Cubans building a port. There you go, yeah. Nothing crazy. <laughs> oh, this is a good look. Obviously, we still gotta fix that, but... Oh, dude, that's oh, so yeah. sick! Yes! Let's get it! Let's get to work! You see the latch? This thing is all the way back, so we gotta pull this right here all the way forward. So this whole thing a little bit yeah. forward. Yeah. You can hear, like... You feel it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No right. bueno, no bueno. <laughs> like every project, we start with some hammering. Then we took out what I think is a sensor for the hood latch, and that gave us plenty of room to put the hydraulic ram from the back side of the tub right to the front end for it to push it forward. It actually fit way too perfect, as, as if it was made for the Porsche front end. That's good. This is the latch. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> Here's the best part, though. Here's the best part. Here's the best part. It works. It works. Yes. But now we gotta fix the more complicated part, and that is to raise the part that is squished down on the tub. The plan is to do the same thing, use a hydraulic ram system, put it under the tub and push it up. But the hydraulic system kept sliding and it didn't really want to push up, so we had to get creative. And well, it actually worked, and we're getting somewhere. But now, most importantly, do things line up and then it actually work. Nice. It's getting good, it's getting good, man. There we go. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Dude, that's... <laughs> I mean, it's looking pretty oh, good yeah. to me. Dude, we should just work for Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're getting a little too ahead of ourselves, but this is looking so much better. I would say it's 90 to 95% there. It's actually insane. Let's take a good look at how it looked like when we started, see how everything is squished down, and look at it now. I would say that's a really good job.
But of course, more issues kept coming up. This time, the fender did not want to stay stiff. It was really flimsy, and at the bottom, it just did not want to line up properly. Put that nut. Oh, uh, right. Up. Yeah. Yep. That's we're missing though. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Yeah. Remember that bracket we took off earlier in this video? That goes to the fender, and we don't have a new one to put back. Thankfully, the fender did come with one. All we had to do was bolt it down, and now the fitment is actually perfect. Dude, that is insane. <laughs> the fitment is absolutely an 8 out of 10. And when the weather strip comes in, the hood will sit a little more up, and the fitment will be a 10 out of 10 after that. But when the whole body kit gets here, including the front bumper, we have to come back and make sure everything fits just perfect to so seam seal and finalize everything. And just like that, a couple hours later, and this is starting to look like a 996 straight out of Stuttgart. I mean, this thing is just looking so good. And let me know what paint color this is, because mine's black, and this is kind of like a black, purple, blue. It's actually really neat, but in reality, I just really want to get this car on the road. So let's go. Okay, I got some really good news and some bad news, but let's start with the bad news. And I feel like this is gonna be a very big life lesson, so if you're watching right now, listen. I got scammed. While trying to buy parts for this car, I got scammed for $1,000. I'm not, $1,020 to be exact. I found what seemed like a very legit company on Facebook. They had lights for an incredible price, $650 to be exact. They sent me a picture of the headlights I needed. I was like, okay, I'm down. And as you guys know, we're trying to save money for this build, so I sent money through Zelle. Then I got two calls of I need to pay some insurance for shipping. And when I realized that I spent an extra $370 on insurance for shipping. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. So although we made a bunch of money on the hood and fender, we lost all of it because we got scammed for $1,000. Although we got scammed for $1,000, we had to spend another $1,000 on lights, which we're still waiting for. The Porsche is starting to look like a car again. And here we have the whole radiator stack. So hopefully we can finally drive the car for the first time. Now this is a used full on stack. So it comes with a condenser, radiator, and back here you can kind of see the fans. One thing I'm a little concerned with though, I am missing the bolts for the AC lines. So we got to figure that out. Okay, so the first thing I'm trying to do is get this bracket right here onto that very bolt so it can at least hold up the bracket. Under the car, there's a bolt for the bracket. We have got to get this plastic piece into that rubber holder, I guess you could say. And the holder is pretty much a bracket itself that goes on the car. And what I love about these brackets is they're all bolted on. Top hose is on. As long as I get this bracket in the back onto that stud, it should pretty much all be good from there. But man, it's hard getting everything on at once. That's a for sure. Although it may be a little difficult, this is my first time ever working on a Porsche. Once this piece goes on the car, we can go ahead and drive it. To make things easier and get a little more space, I want to take the wheel off, but this is one big issue. They did something called wheel locks. As we come down here, we got a normal bolt, normal bolt, normal bolt, normal bolt, and then we got this weird looking one. And since this is a gold park car, I don't know where the wheel lock key is. I'm praying that I can find it because we got to take off this wheel to really fit the radiator correctly. I literally looked everywhere and could not find the wheel lock anywhere on this car. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, I found something. I found something. It's a cigarette lighter thing. That's definitely not it. I even looked online and it said it would be in the trunk in something called a tool kit. Well, here's the thing. My car did not come with a trunk, a spare tire, or a tool kit. So I definitely just don't have the wheel lock, which is going to set us back a couple hundred dollars. Hi, Reach, Porsche Naples Parts Department. This is Carlos speaking. How can I help you today? Hey, Carlos. Uh, I'm looking for a wheel key for my 99, uh, 911. All yeah. Right. Do you have the full VIN number of the vehicle? Yeah. What was your name, sir? Uh, Danny. Danny, yeah. Danny, let me get with my manager on this one. I'm going to go over options with him to see what kind of, if you have OEM lug. Uh, do you know if they're the OEM Porsche anti-step lugs? Yeah, yeah, they are. So what I'll do with him is 
how can I get one available or if we can get a replacement key through. Let's see which one is the fastest method as well as cost effective and I'll give you a call back as soon as I can. Not even Porsche of Naples has a wheel key for this car. I really want to drive this car today. Okay, so temporary solution by turning the wheel this way, it actually gives me a good amount of room to get up in here and pretty much plug everything in and do everything correctly. So this rod comes from under the bucket to the fender and it was hitting the whole radiator stack. And that's probably why. <laughs> so to save some money and not have to wait for some car parts, we're gonna bend it back. and now it actually fits. Let's go. Radiator stack is on the car looking absolutely quintessential. Now all the car needs is coolant, which the car takes five gallons of coolant and let me tell you it is expensive <laughs> thankfully our local auto parts store has coolant that people use on these porsches with so the g40 formula so let's go pick that up and let me tell you we literally took every single g40 pink slash purple coolant they had and we spent a total of 100 dollars on just coolant and while i was on my way home i actually got a call from porsche we have a master set here okay we'll match up the key to the lock set you have and then we can take a look at what, what key fits in there and then we can order you one, which is it's gonna take a bit, uh, a bit of a, a while to see. I have to see how, how long they are coming in. Well, it looks like we're not gonna see that key for the wheels for a very long time. So for now, let's go ahead and move on. Also, I did notice a lot of you were asking how I was able to buy or even bid on the car. Well, it was all thanks to someone named Nick, a local friend of mine and the owner of Spark Speed Shop. He has a very cool service called First Dibs, which to give you a quick rundown, he bids and even helps you find the vehicle you want from auction websites. Usually transportation costs so much money. Well, he was able to arrange transportation for me for a very reasonable price. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description to his service. What you think? First impressions? Dude, I'm blown away. I've always wanted to buy one of these at auction. I'm glad you did it first. I had, I, did, I never would have guessed you would have bought this car, first of all. I know, right? <laughs> I'm thrilled you did. I'm thrilled we're going to be driving it, and I'm thrilled it only cost me no dollars. That is insane, dude. Yeah, pretty much. That's, dude, man, you got way luckier than I did on the Maserati, that's for sure. How good does that feel? Like snug in. Right? I'm 6'1", too. This isn't bad at all. I am as shocked as you are. This is how many bottles it takes for the coolant system in this car. There's a really hefty write-up on how to exactly bleed the cooling system in this car. It's not like my BMW where you just press the gas pedal, the water pump turns on, and then it does its thing. This is a little more complicated, so let's go. Obviously, first on the list, we got to fill it up. Also, this coolant reservoir looks pretty new. I've seen people's online, and when they get old, they start getting yellow. This one's, like, pretty clear. Let's go. So maybe they switched it. I don't know. Also, another bad news about the car, the IMS has not uh, been done. There's no record of the IMS being done. Now, the IMS bearing is pretty much a small geared shaft that goes through the engine. And, well, when that fails, it causes catastrophic failure. So now we're going to go ahead and throw in the car. Never mind, the car's dead. Which, we also need a battery because it doesn't want to catch any more shards. The IMS bearing is a semi-common thing on these cars to go bad. Thankfully, it goes bad on lower mileage cars that don't get driven a lot. My car has 120,000 miles. If the IMS bearing hasn't been done, which I think it has been done, at this point, I don't think it's going to go bad, so we should be okay. Okay, no oil leak. That's good. So now I got to keep topping off the coolant, making sure the car doesn't overheat, and kind of rev it from time to time. The bleeding procedure for this car goes like this. Warm up the engine until you see the thermostat is open. Run five more minutes at 2,500 RPMs, revving to 5,000 RPMs every 30 seconds. Carefully open the radiator cap and top off the coolant. And then you'll hear the fans turn on and turn back off, and then you should be good. That's the bleeder valve that helps us bleed the whole coolant system, and it actually makes it really easy. The last thing Porsche thought about was their customer doing a coolant flush while wearing socks and having absolutely no idea how to do anything. Oh my God, it's smoking, it's smoking, it's smoking. So we gotta keep doing that for about 10 minutes and the fans should turn on and as of now, they have not turned on. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong or what. So I gave up for the night and it's continued tomorrow, which I really wanted to make sure 
It requires zero oil leaks, and it does. Let's go, zero oil leaks. I also really couldn't stop playing with the wing. It's just the coolest thing ever. But thankfully, the fans turned on. The fans turned on, yes! Y'all hear that? But I don't think this one turned on. I don't hear it. I even tried taking out the radiator scoop in case I wasn't hearing the fan, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but at this point, I wasn't sure why the second fan wasn't turning on. That's what happens when you leave the radiator cap open and well, the car gets a little too hot. <sighs> okay, let's try it again. And the car just kept getting hot for some reason. And the second radiator fan was not turning on. Kept searching forums online, topping off the coolant, revving it, making sure it was up to temp, and then thankfully out of nowhere, Turned off, that's good. Okay, it's getting cooler. The car's getting cooler. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, look at that, it's going all the way down. It was up to here, and now it's going back down to 180. I'm gonna keep revving it from time to time either way, just to be 100% sure, but. Pero que no. Creo que uno se prende cuando está en temperatura normal y el otro es cuando se pone super caliente. The car's bled, I'm ready for the first drive, but I just had to show Papa Z how the wing went up and down and he absolutely loved it. And now for the most nerve wracking yet exciting part of any build, the first drive. Everything can go amazing or go absolutely wrong. Here we go. And we're off. That's so smooth. We're driving. Everything sounds normal, I think. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're driving a Porsche. We're driving. Oh, it goes into gear so smooth. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna go to the steering wheel. It's not pulling anywhere what's, this is straighter than my car. <laughs> it's not pulling anywhere whatsoever. Now how insane is it that we're on the first drive in a Porsche 911. I never thought we'd be doing this right now. It is such a special build and such a special moment. We're an absolute wreck driving around right now. <laughs> Taking the suspension to its, oh my goodness. Wait, that turning radius is ridiculous. <laughs> now let's do a quick acceleration. <laughs> okay. Well, that felt really good. Let's do another one, why not? <laughs> Wait, that feels pretty quick. Look at the camera even moved. <laughs> This, honey, I don't think you realize first drives are usually not very successful, but this, this is a W. This is a W. Temps look good. We did two pulls. Let's go. Aguida, come here. Get out of here. Dale, 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 dale,